Hey guys, welcome back to Chickadee Farm. My name is Karina, if you are new here, and I'm glad to have you. If you're not new here, glad to have you as well. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a non-preservation project. Okay, so it, maybe it's a little bit of a preservation project because it is gonna go in the freezer, but it's not coming from the garden. It's not tomatoes, although I do have some tomatoes on the stove turning into ketchup, but we're not doing that. So today, or actually the other day, I was in Costco just stocking up on a few things and they had a really great deal on pork shoulder, pork, pork shoulder butt actually. So this is just a little over 16 pounds of pork shoulder. And I have been wanting to experiment making a couple different kinds of sausages. So I've made Italian, my own Italian sausage for years now and um, the, I think I mentioned it a while back when I was doing some food prep and that I buy my breakfast sausage all the time and it would be super easy to make and I, why am I not making it? I should be making it, putting it in my freezer, don't have to buy it. And then that way I absolutely know everything that's in it, which is great. So I want to make some breakfast sausage and then the other two sausages I want to make, which will be stuffed sausages, will be a uh, kielbasa and a Hungarian sausage. And then, so not only do I have this pork butt, but I also have uh, just over four pounds of um, beef chuck roast and then a big slab of pork belly. I won't use all of the pork belly. In fact, I don't think I'm gonna use all of the beef either, um, but we'll see. But whatever I don't use of the pork belly, I will set that to curing to become bacon. That takes quite a while to do. Like, I think it had, needs to cure for a week or something like that. Um, David's actually the one that usually makes the bacon, so I haven't, I haven't looked it up yet, but that's, what, that's my plan. Um, anyway, so, um, and I should mention too, that even this is the sausage is going to be a two day process because the stuffed sausages, once they are stuffed, they need to go into the refrigerator and dry overnight then they'll go into the smoker. So this will be a two day process. Second day will be pretty quick. Um, first day, not so much. So the first thing we need to do is start getting all of this meat cut into pieces. All right, this is definitely going to be a process, not a short one. <laughs> so I will not have you watch me cut all of the meat, but um, I just wanted to let you know uh, a few things about sausage making. So David got me a nice grinder. Let me see if I can show it to you right there. Um, it's been about six months or so. Um, I have the KitchenAid attachment, the grinder for the KitchenAid. And it's great if you're doing small batches of meat, but um, when you're doing this amount, it really just, it's really slow. It gets gummed up really easily. So um, he got me this nice grinder because the last time I made Italian sausage, uh, and I usually make about four pounds, five pounds at a time, uh, I was moaning and whining about how long it was taking to get through the grinder and how it was getting stuck and blah, blah, blah. So he got me a new grinder. The thing about grinding though is, or the trick about grinding meat, is that it needs to be very cold, like almost frozen cold. You definitely like want the edges of your pieces to be frozen. Otherwise, the, the fats and like the membranes that are still in the meat, they, they will get gummed up. It doesn't matter how strong your, your grinder is. I mean, maybe if you have a, a really fancy commercial grinder, it wouldn't care, but this is still just a uh, home grinder, so. Uh, we need to make sure we have this meat very cold. So what I'm gonna do is I need to get something else to put this in so I don't make a complete mess on my counter in a second. All right, oh, oh, nice, it's in two pieces. That makes it so much easier. Um, and then of course you need to cut it into small enough pieces to um, get through your, your grinder hopper. Let me throw this away. 
like I said, I will need to come and sanitize all my counters after I'm done, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now because it's probably gonna be messy. All right, so back to what I was saying. We need to cut this up into strips and then the size that can go through the grinder, put it on a tray and it will go in the freezer. Um, probably 10, 15 minutes, I suppose it depends how cold your freezer is, until, like I said, the edges are pretty much um, frozen. You don't want it rock solid because that will not go through either. <laughs> um, but you do uh, want it pretty, pretty close to frozen. So I'm just gonna get this cut up. I, you can see here, this big thing of fat. Um, I think I'm gonna cut most of it off because I am adding a lot of pork belly, which has a lot of fat uh, to both recipes. So I'll keep it. Um, I'll just put it in a bowl and put it in the fridge, uh, but I am going to not put it through the grinder. Not all of it, anyway. Just wanted to check the hole in my hopper and make sure this would go through it. So about that size for my grinder. You don't want it to be too huge too, because then it will, will take a really long time for them to freeze. So, just keep them in sizable chunks, but not huge. On the subject of fat in sausage, you definitely do want fat. Otherwise your sausage is gonna be just dry and not very good. And the last time I made, the last batch of Italian sausage I made, I definitely didn't leave enough fat in because it's just, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's definitely noticeably dry after it's cooked. So I actually have never looked up what the percentage of fat to meat you should have in Italian sausage. I should probably do that. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna get this all cut up. I'll probably do this first piece and get them in the freezer so that while I'm cutting up the second piece, these are freezing and by the time I'm done with the second piece, these should be frozen enough to go through the grinder. So I will bring you back when it is time to start going through the grinder. I have gotten everything cut up here, just the little last bits of pork belly left. Um, so I ended up with, I'm using about, okay, let me, let me start over. I, I want to double all of the recipes. So I need four pounds of the pork and one pound of the beef and one pound of the pork belly for both of them, for one recipe. So, um, Oh wait, that doesn't give me any for the breakfast sausage. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll figure that out. <laughs> I have a ways to go yet before we get there. Um, and anyway, so that left me with uh, just, uh, I have, uh, I think I have four and a half pounds of pork belly here, and so that left me with about two and a half pounds to turn into bacon. And it might not sound like very much, but it actually is a fairly sizable slab. This is a nine by 13 pan. So, I mean, that's that's a good amount of bacon. Um, all right, all done with this. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer and check the pork and see how it's doing. All right, this is the first pan we put in. The edges are just starting to freeze. It's probably actually been in here for maybe 10 minutes or so. Um, I might turn it around because these back ones are a little more solid than the front. So let me do that. I also have the pan underneath full of the second batch. So it's not anywhere near being frozen. Yeah, these are definitely much harder. But so actually you can 
kind of see, I can't really squeeze it. In fact, this one might be slightly too hard, but I think it's the only one that's slightly too hard. Okay, so we'll let these keep going. And in the meantime, it was actually not, oh, I can figure out how, what I'm doing with the bacon. Let's do that. I have found a uh, bacon recipe from Steve Raikland's Project Smoke. It's one of uh, David's barbecue books um, and actually uh, one of his favorites. This guy is, is super knowledgeable. He's got a bunch of videos out um, and he's really enjoyable to watch too. He's kind of got a dry humor. Anyway, it's called Made From Scratch Bacon and it is really, really simple. It has only a few ingredients. It has the pork belly, some salt, um, ground pepper, dark brown sugar, and curing salt. Now, let's talk about curing salt. This is what has causes something to have nitrates in it because it is, I, I just looked it up, it's um, sodium nitrate, it contains 6.25% sodium nitrate, 4% sodium nitrate, and those are the same things. Oh, this is prog powder number two. We're doing prog powder number one. Okay, let me find prog powder number one. Just a second. Okay, prog powder number one. It contains 6.25% sodium nitrate and 93.75% table salt. This prog powder or curing salt, number one, or pink salt, it's called all of those things. Number one is used for in these applications. So bacon, these sausages that we're making. If you are making a like dried salami type um, thing, <laughs> salami sausage, um, then you would use prog powder number two. Now I know a lot of people don't want to have food with nitrates in it, uh, but we've just found that it honestly makes the flavor better and um, I, I don't know. I'm not that concerned about it. I at least know how much I'm putting in so um, we can control that. But yeah, so I know that curing salt is nitrates. I get it, a lot of people don't like that. If you don't like it, don't do that. <laughs> but my recipes have curing salt in them. Okay, so all we need to do is make a quick rub of these ingredients rub it on to the pork belly and put it in a Ziploc bag in the fridge for six days. So let's make the powder or the rub. All right, so we are going to start out with one third of a cup of dark brown sugar. You can use just plain white sugar if you want, um, but this just adds some extra flavor. We like dark brown, dark brown sugar. And then we need a third of a cup of regular salt. This is just diamond kosher salt. You do sea salt, just you don't wanna use something that is iodized or has like anti-caking um, additives in it. And then we need three tablespoons of freshly cracked black pepper. Uh, so what we do is we grind up enough to fill this little guy. So we know that it's always pretty fresh but that we don't have to grind it ourselves every single time we want to use it. And then this is for, this recipe is for three to three and a half pounds of um, pork belly. And this is only about two and a half pounds. So I'm just going to do a teaspoon and a half instead of the two teaspoons of the curing salt. All right, then we just give this a good mix. And then we're just going to rub half of this brine on the top and half of it on the bottom. It 
does specifically say to use all of it. Oops, geez, making a mess. So I'm not sure if that just means I really need to rub it in because there's certainly a lot. Granted, this is also slightly smaller. What this is going to do though is it's going to bring out all of the uh, liquids water that's in the meat and basically it forms a wet brine um, in the bag and so it, it'll use up everything but I do want to make sure it's all nicely coated okay and then I'm gonna wash my hands so I can put it in the bag Nice little trick when you are putting anything that's sticky or wet or crummy like this um, is just fold back the top of your bag so that it doesn't get into the tracks of your Ziploc bag. I am going to go ahead and put all of the rest of this in there as well. Press all of the air out. As much of it as you can. And then I'm just gonna rinse out that um, nine by 13 pan again, put this in there, put it in the garage and the fridge. And uh, you do need to flip it every day while it is curing. Uh, but six days later, you put it on the smoker, smoke it to, uh, what's the temperature? Let's see. So it says set your smoker to 170 and smoke until bronzed with wood smoke and the internal temperature reaches 155 degrees. It usually takes three and a half to four hours, depending on the size of your pork belly. So yeah, I'm excited. All right. That is done. Let's get on to the next thing. All right, our pork is maybe a little too frozen now. <laughs> That's okay. Um, there's enough soft pieces that this, the ones that are a little too hard can thaw as I'm putting those ones through. But first off, we're going to get the uh, grinder all set up. The other um, thing to do when you are getting ready to grind or before you get ready to grind is to put the all the metal components into your refrigerator so they are also nice and cold. Especially if your house is warm. Alright, I have only done this one time, so I am going to make sure I'm setting it up right. It actually has nice little pictures for me. Alright. Looks like I already have this all set up for myself. Look at me. And then we are going to, this is called a wagon wheel um, plate, wagon wheel plate. So we're going to send it through on this first, and then we will send it back through with this plate. I actually don't know what size this is, and it doesn't say, probably says somewhere. Um, oh yeah, here it is. So four remaining grinding plates. So the smallest one, let's get these all out so you can see. All right, so there's a small, small one, which is four millimeters. The next size up is the one that I'm going to do, which is eight millimeters. And then there's a 10 and a 12. And then there's this one that I don't know what it's for. We're not going to worry about that one right now, though. So I'm actually going to go put this plate back into the refrigerator. All right, so put 
this guy in here. There's a little notch at the top of this that goes on there. a bowl in here. This is a little big to go in here, but it can tilt. It's fine. Oh, and I just realized that all of the things for, you know, the buttons are on that side. So I'm going to turn this all around and then we'll start. All right. Now we are in business. Um, stop there and set low. Okay. I think it's in and on like it's supposed to be. Wish me luck. <laughs> also, this is going to be very loud. happens when you don't your meat isn't quite cold enough so I guess I thought it was but I really need to use the more frozen pieces it's basically just this this uh, the fat gets all gummed up in these and it can't get through I'm not sure how that happens or why I mean you think it would just cut it but Does not seem to. All right, I'm gonna throw this stuff in the freezer with the stuff that's still in there. Let's try this again. Actually going to I'm going to spread this back out on the pan and let it um, I think do I want to put it in the freezer yeah I'm gonna put it back in the freezer actually I'm gonna put it in the fridge for right now until the one that's in the freezer that with the big chunks is ready to go then I will put it in the this in the freezer grind that pull this out and regrind it with the new smaller blade all right let's do that in the refrigerator, this goes. I just finished the second tray of the pork, uh, pork butt, and that's the beef back there. And I was thinking that I was gonna send the pork back through, but I might as well just grind everything with the big plate first, because it's all going in the same sausage, so it, like, it doesn't matter if the beef and the pork kind of mix in. Um, and then I'll just run everything through, I'll, and I'll run the um, pork belly through as well on the big plate first, and then I'll just run everything through again on the um, smaller plate. So, um, I think my beef, yes, it's, it's not solid anymore, so it can get run through. So I'm just gonna put this um, in the refrigerator with the other one and get busy with the beef. can't tell you how often I've had to wash my hands during this. <laughs> All right, we are going to send the beef through. This one will be a little faster because it's not nearly as much. A lot 
last but not least is our pork belly. I just absolutely am so impressed with this grinder too. I mean, the only thing that has caused any um, delay in this is because I needed the meat to get chilled and then I got it too chilled. So totally my fault, um, not the machines, but as soon as I start grinding through it, I mean, if I timed it, I, I wish I had timed it now, um, I bet I went through those 16 pounds in like a total of less than five minutes. So this thing just powers through it, it's amazing. I have gotten all of the meat through the second grinding. Again, just so much faster than my KitchenAid ever was. Goodness gracious. So now we're just going to get this out and the rest of the meat that is kind of left in here. Um, actually, that does not need to come out. And then um, I'm going to get all of this meat back in the fridge so it stays nice and cold while we figure out next steps. I have all of the meat ground and uh, I'm taking machines mostly taken apart, um, but I need to finish doing that and get it cleaned up. Uh, all of the meat is in the refrigerator to keep it nice and cold. And as soon as I get this all cleaned, um, we will start measuring out the amounts we need for each of the sausages and then start with the seasonings. That's right. I cleaned all this up, I just realized um, I'm going to need this to stuff the sausages. So, oh well. <laughs> it's ready now. And it is going to be a while before uh, we get to that. So, um, in fact, probably after dinner, I guess. So it doesn't hurt to have it all cleaned up now before it dries in there and gets all disgusting. Oh, and I, I don't know me that I haven't told you uh, what who this what this grinder is. It is STX International Turbo Force Two Quad Air Cooled Electric Meat Grinder. STX Turbo Force Two. Yep, four hundred series. Yeah, that's what it is. So I, I keep meaning to look up too if there's actually a strainer attachment for it because wouldn't that be cool go so fast straining all the tomatoes and stuff anyway i think we need to look it up and i haven't yet but i will at some point all right um so i'm just gonna i'm gonna well put this back together i actually don't know what attachment i need on it So I'll just leave out here for now, put this guy back on, and then we will figure it out. But for now, let's get busy mixing things up. Well, as I was going through the cupboard looking for the big huge thing of paprika that I could have sworn we had, uh, we don't have any didn't tap any. Well, we do, but it's smoked hot paprika, which I don't want to use. So I had to go to the store and get paprika. Yeah. And of course they didn't have a big one. So I had to buy three small ones, but they did have hot Hungarian even paprika that is not smoked. So, cause you can find we can typically find smoked paprika and regular paprika, but you rarely find just hot paprika. So that's exciting. Um, so now it is much later in the day. One might even say almost nighttime. So uh, now I need to get busy getting these things mixed up. So I'm gonna dab all the meat out and we will get busy with, um, I think we'll do the kielbasa first. Let's do the kielbasa first. It also just dawned on me that I only need the beef 
chuck for the kielbasa and not for the Hungarian sausage. So now I'm gonna have two pounds of ground beef. I guess I'll just freeze it and we can use it as ground beef. It'll be fine. Um, all right, so both of these recipes are coming from the uh, website called tasteofartisan.com. He's got all kinds of different sausages and cured meat stuff. Um, and this one is called Homemade Zwoska, S-W-O-J-S-K-A, Polish Kielbasa. And the ingredients are four and a half pounds of pork butt, one pound of beef chuck, one pound of pork belly, three cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of dried marjoram, two teaspoons black pepper, two tablespoons kosher salt, one and a third teaspoons cure one, the number one, the prog powder, and a cup of ice water. So we've already ground all of the meats. And yeah, so now we just put it all in a bowl, add everything in and mix it really well. And then we get to stuffing. It's easy, it's easy. Um, so I do just wanna say, um, marjoram is not a very common herb that kind of the average person has in their kitchen. In fact, I wouldn't, except that I grew it this year. So I do happen to have some. Um, the closest thing you can use to replace it is oregano. Um, it won't have quite, marjoram kind of has this floral almost scent to it. More than marjoram, yeah. It's like a little bit of a floral scent. It smells delicious. So it's not quite as strong. So if you're using oregano, I probably would use less than it's called for, but I'm going to actually be using more. which is exciting. Excuse me. All right, let's get the meats in here. I am gonna go ahead and weigh them so we are mostly accurate. I th think this bowl will be big enough. I guess we'll see. All right, so let's, since the beef happens to be on top, Let's get two pounds of beef going in here. Maybe should have done this on the other counter. We have a little more room. That's okay. All right. Let me go grab a scooper. All right. So we need a pound, and we are doubling this. So we're going to go with... Oh, except I should put it on the correct units, not grams. Yeah, this bowl is so not gonna be big enough. <laughs> hmm, because I have to put quadruple this. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do one recipe, mix it up, and then do a second recipe and mix it up. Because I don't really have a bowl much bigger than this. Apparently I need some bigger bowls. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now we have our pork belly. And we need a pound of this as well. And the pork butt. Tear this out again. This is a lot. I wonder if I really do need to double. It, it says it only makes eight sausages, so I was hoping to do more, but this seems like a lot of meat. There we go. Four and a half. Let me wash my hands for the 500th time. All right, let's get this over here. So I'm using garlic, my little garlic pucks, because I didn't feel like, um, excuse me, what am I saying? Peeling a bunch of garlic, because the Hungarian sausage requires a lot of garlic per recipe, but it's still frozen solid, so I'm gonna put it in the microwave real quick so it's easier to mix in. Right, while we're waiting for that, we need two teaspoons of black ground black pepper. And two teaspoons of the dried marjoram. Which I'm gonna crush this up a bit. Mm. 
It doesn't say marjoram powder, so I just want it to be a little bit finer than it currently is. So two tablespoons of kosher salt. This is just diamond kosher salt, but you can use any, or you could honestly, you could use sea salt. And one and a third teaspoon of Prague powder. remember if I mentioned it when I was talking about the um, curing salt but it also not only does it enhance the flavor but it also um, gives it more lasting power I mean it's it is a preservative for sure all right well, this guy is ready this would be the garlic and I kind of assumed that these um, garlic pucks each of them is about um, three cloves of garlic, so I think we are close enough. Yeah, I'm just going to dig in here with my hands and get this all mixed together. And the reason you use ice water is because you want this to stay as cold as possible. You don't want any of the fats to start kind of melting. I mean, obviously they're not really going to melt with just your um, temperature from your hands, but you, just to be sure you want everything to stay as cold as possible. And typically with any kind of ground meat, you also don't want to work it significantly. So you want to be a little bit careful, but still get everything mixed in well. All right, I don't think I have any pockets of like just beef or just pork or just the pork belly. I think it's all mixed together pretty well. Let's clean off my hands and then I actually think I probably needed to have my casings soaking in clean water because I think they're probably salted. So let me go grab those and that might delay this process even more. Perfect. Sure enough, they are, a pa so this is what I'm using. They are natural hog casings by Oversea Casings. I just got it online and um, they had good reviews. No artificial ingredients, minimally processed. And it says, most natural casings come dry, dry packed in salt. First rinse in cool water and soak for 15 minutes. Open one end and let warm water from the faucet rinse entire length. If too long, cut into two foot sections. After rinsing, tie the knot at the end and place on paper towel until ready to stuff. Rinse only what you need. Repack balance in salt and refrigerate. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no idea how much I need. So well, let's open this up and see what we have. All right, looks like they maybe are on a little ring. All right, so we're going to set a timer for 15 minutes and come back to these. I'm gonna put this stuff in the fridge. It has been 15 minutes, so let's find in one of these guys and figure out if we can open it. <laughs> hmm, is there a trick to this? Sounds like, oh, oh, there it is. I got it. I got it. Basically, all this is doing is just making sure that all any of the salt that's on the inside is oh, and I just tore a hole in it is getting 
rinsed out as well because you really don't want that in your sausage since your sausage should already be fully seasoned. And like I said, I just I did just put a hole in the very top of that one. These are, I mean, they're fairly strong, but they are delicate at the same time. So you do want to be careful you're not like digging your nails into it and stuff. And now I need to figure out the whole stuffing process. <laughs> Thankfully, my uh, little booklet that came with the grinder has detailed instructions for how to stuff things. So I'm gonna go read that right now. Oh, where am I looking? Okay, sausage stuffing assembly. Insert the auger, which is already in there. Um, mount the sausage stuffing plate. Ah, oh, that is this guy. This is the sausage stuffing plate. Yeah, do not use the cutting blade. All right, so no cutting blade. Wow, that's sharp. Choose the stuffing tube of your choice. Insert it through the back of the adapter ring. I think that's this thing. Um, hmm. I don't know what size. Do it maybe the middle size? I feel like this would make it really thick, but you kind of want kielbasas to be thick, right? right well, let's go with this one. And try it and if it doesn't work we can always take it off and put the other one. It needs to quick rinse though. Ah, okay, so thread it through this guy like that. And then this goes through that and that holds it on. So this um, model came with this foot pedal power and it's saying that um, Foot pedal power control will make this process much easier. When stuffing, it is a good idea to spray all parts of the grinding head wherever the sausage mixture comes in contact with the cooking spray. This will make your sausage extrude a lot faster and makes the stuffing process easier. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it all apart and spray everything with cooking spray. All right, and I'm also gonna go get the foot pedal. All right, so now we are going to get the See if I can show you what I'm doing here. Find the blade opening again. All right, there we go. Casings onto this little guy here. Oh, and I also did take this whole apart and spray it with cooking spray. So you wanna try and get these on here as evenly as possible. So far, this looks like great casing. A lot of times when you get casing, they'll have holes kind of scattered throughout it, which means you have to cut it and kind of start again. But this one so far hasn't had any, except for the one that I put in it. <laughs> and now we are ready to start stuffing. <laughs> Exciting. I changed my mind. First, I'm going to mix up the Hungarian sausage. And um, so it can be sitting in the fridge kind of melding flavors as well. Um, now, my father's probably not gonna be very pleased with me. Uh, my family on his side um, are Hungarian. My grandmother, his mom, um, her parents immigrated to the United States when she was a kid. And uh, dad remembers his grandmother and the aunts all speaking Hungarian to each other. Um, and so they were very much, they were in a Hungarian community um, and they had, they used all of the, you know, their country recipes that they had grown up using. One of them, of course, is a Hungarian sausage. Well, I have it. Um, so this was from great grandma Toth, that was her name. Toth was her last name, Aunt V and Great Grandma Toth. And it calls for ground pork, paprika, black pepper, salt, and a clove of crushed garlic. 
So it sounds very similar, but it only has, for five pounds of pork, it only has one teaspoon of black pepper, two teaspoons of paprika, one tablespoon of salt. The clove, one clove, is soaked in half a cup of water and then removed and just used the garlic infused water. I'm sure I've had this before. I'm sure that mom and dad made it when I was growing up. I don't honestly remember. So it also doesn't sound super flavorful, quite honestly. So I found on the same tasteofartisan.com website, um, I found another one for it. This calls for the pork butt, the uh, pork belly, one and three quarters tablespoon of kosher salt, the um, prog powder, two and a half teaspoons black pepper, six and a half tablespoons of sweet paprika, three tablespoons of hot paprika, seven cloves of garlic, and three teaspoons of caraway seeds ground, and then a teaspoon of sugar and a cup of ice water. That just sounds way more flavorful to me. So I'm, I'm sorry, great grandma Toth. I'm gonna use this one instead. All right, so I am gonna weigh out again the meat. I don't think I have enough for an entire half recipe, or two, two recipes rather. Um, and like I said earlier, the um, I don't have enough of the ground pork to do the breakfast sausage. So that's gonna have to be next time. But let us start with the Hungarian sausage, or the, sorry, the pork. Move this out of the way so I drop meat all over it. All right, let me show you what I'm actually doing here. All right, here's our meat. All right, one and three quarters tablespoon. One, oh, and a, a good tip for actually anytime you're gonna mix seasoning into ground meats, don't just dump your seasonings like in a pile in one spot. Try and sprinkle them all around because um, it will just give you, it'll just make it so much easier to get it all mixed in, especially when you're talking about this amount of meat. So that's one recipe to grind some more black pepper. All right. Two and a half teaspoons. Six tablespoons of sweet paprika. So six, so one, two, three. All right, that is the sweet paprika or just regular paprika. And then we need three tablespoons of the hot, so four and a half. Seven cloves of garlic. These are mostly thawed now, so three, six. I had actually never smelled ground caraway seeds. I just ground these up um, this afternoon. Uh, three teaspoons. And they smell really good. I don't know. It, it wasn't what I expected ground caraway to smell like. I don't. I don't know that I had any idea what ground caraway should smell like. But <laughs> two teaspoons of sugar. I just put too much sugar in there. I was only supposed to put a teaspoon and a half. It's okay. So I need one and a half teaspoons of this. One cup. All right, and then this will be my last time digging in here with my hands. Make sure I got everything. Yep, looks like it. All right, let's get this mixed up. My hands are going to be red <laughs> after this. It's okay. All right, we're gonna call that good. Get my orange hands. <laughs> it's an adventure. Alrighty, we are starting with 
the, well, not, not with those on there. <laughs> um, kielbasa. And wow, okay. I can't deny it, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> this should be fine. Let's see how it goes. All right, so this was half of the meat. Half, oh, it was a full recipe that was supposed to make eight sausages. I don't know how big a sausage they think that somebody needs, but I mean, these are big sausages and there are 19. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There are 18. So more than double what, they said a recipe would make. We are gonna have kielbasa coming out of our ears. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. So, uh, geez, it's now um, late, uh, nine o'clock. It is nine o'clock and it took me about an hour to do these. Oh, can I do another hour? The kielbasa are the only ones that actually need to uh, be in the fridge overnight to dry. The Hungarian sausage says that it just needs three or four hours, so I can totally do those tomorrow. Ugh. And I'm kind of thinking like, if I just get up early and do it and give it like, I don't know, six hours to rest in the fridge. Because I'm really not feeling like doing the rest of it right now. Uh, okay, well, you will find out tomorrow what I decide to do. In the meantime, I'm going to figure out how to lay these flattish on something so they, cause they need to not be touching each other. Um, cause their skin, the, the casing needs to dry basically on the outside. Um, all right. So regardless of whether I finish the kielbasas tonight, I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>